As the nation prepares to wind down for the holidays, key members of Congress face an uphill battle negotiating a $110 billion national security supplemental funding package. The bill includes much needed aid to Ukraine and Israel, but some prominent Latino members of Congress are raising concerns when it comes to the immigration and the asylum systems. And joining us now is California Senator Alex Padilla. He's the chair of the Senate Judiciary Com Subcommittee on Immigration, Citizenship and Border Security. Good afternoon, Senator. Thank you so much for being with us. We're going to dive right into it. This package appears to be stalled with negotiations, much of it due to immigration and border policy. So, Senator, what are your biggest concerns about this supplemental package? So, uh, well, good afternoon, Will. Good afternoon, Eva. And uh, I appreciate the context that you set here. Uh, it is a, a package that includes aid to Israel, includes aid to Ukraine, which I wholeheartedly support. Uh, but for whatever reason, folks have chosen to try to link this negotiation to uh, border and immigration policy, which is important. Uh, I, but I don't think one should necessarily be held hostage for the other. Now, on the topic of border and immigration, uh, the concern really starts with what we hear is being entertained by the White House and being uh, forced upon the negotiation table by Republicans. And that's frankly the failed policies of the Trump administration. No need to go back there. Uh, is there an increased number of folks coming to the border uh, in recent uh, months, in the uh, last couple of years? Yes, and it's important to understand why if we're going to responsibly and sustainably address it. But returning to the, pun the Trump policies, we know, is not the solution. Well, one of the things that you've said you're concerned about with all of this is, are the dreamers. Talk us through that. Right. So there's a, a lot of elements when it comes to uh, immigration policy. Uh, it's one thing to talk about people that are trying to come into the United States for a number of reasons. You know, I'll remind the viewers that it is not unlawful for somebody fleeing persecution, fleeing an authoritarian regime like we see in Venezuela, for example, to come to the United States seeking asylum. There's a process for that that we need to invest in more hearing officers, more judges, etc. But that's a very different population than some of the people who have have been in the United States for a long time. Yes, undocumented. We know many of them as dreamers, young people who were brought here by their parents when they were infants in many cases, but have done well here in school. Uh, they're uh, working, contributing to the success of our communities and our country. You know, you go into the agricultural fields, many here in California, and you see so many farm workers doing work that nobody else would even dream of doing, helping keep food on our tables, but they happen to be undocumented, especially given their service during the course of the pandemic. They deserve better than to live in constant fear of deportation. So. As far as I can tell, the negotiations on a border policy has not even considered providing protections or a pathway, not even to citizenship, just to uh, a legal resident status uh, for these folks that we applauded so much uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm curious what you're most concerned about long term when you're looking at a package like this. Yeah, I think long term is uh, we end up with a policy package that uh, fundamentally doesn't work. It's going to continue to push people to come uh, in uh, uh, what some people call irregular, some people call, call unlawful uh, ways. And it's going to continue to be a, 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 a political leverage point uh, in the future. You know, to think that we are entertaining a budget supplemental package, a budget supplemental negotiation historically has just been about dollars and cents. It hasn't been about permanent policy changes. The policy is important and there's a process for that. So the next time there's a deadline, whether it's a budget deadline, maybe it's a debt ceiling deadline or some other must pass piece of legislation, uh, I, my prediction is Republicans will have us right back here seeking to go more draconian, more draconian until they achieve their uh, Donald Trump, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Miller wish list. Before we let you go, Senator, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signed Senate Bill 4, which makes entering Texas illegally a state crime. What are the chances that that bill could stick in Texas? 
uh, look, I have a serious doubts that the, that state law, the new state law, is going to hold up in court. We've seen this uh, act before. We've seen it in Texas. We've seen it uh, efforts in Arizona. We've even seen efforts like this uh, in California a few decades ago. Uh, you know, protecting our borders, uh, citizenship. Uh, that's a federal responsibility. It's been uh, maintained uh, in the courts year, you know, over the years. Uh, and I think uh, the state law is going to be struck down. Uh, but it's just a reminder of the, the urgency and the pressure with which we need to act in Congress, but doing so thoughtfully and strategically uh, and not just responding to political rhetoric. Senator Padilla, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank, thank you so much. Have a good holiday. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.